interesting mm-hmm. things going on there with Ronna McDaniel. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, she's a sweetheart. A lot of people are. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, what what Vivek did with her was uh, oh. uh, legendary oh. at one of these uh, the cancer debates. Of the However, party. so it. she comes in. NBC gives her a contract. I think it's two hundred. It's what is it, Tom? Three hundred. Three hundred for two years. And let me let me read the contract so you you kind of get an idea, and then you'll see what some people are talking about it. The, the people at NBC lost their minds coming together saying, we got to get rid of her. There's no way she should have a job here. Ronna McDonald expected to be paid out for her $600,000 NBC contract oh, wow. uh, fully to be paid by NBC for being dropped after just four days of announcing uh, she was joining the network as a political contributor. The ex-RNC chair's contract was $300,000 a year for two years. Political reported with her uh, loan appearance. On NBC's Meet the Press on Sunday that lasted less than 20 minutes, that amounts to $30,000 a minute. She made $500 a second. Oh, McDaniel has man. not spoken publicly That's about her great. short-lived tenure since the announcement on Tuesday evening from NBC that she was being dropped. But political reports that she is lawyering up and spoke with Brian Friedman on Tuesday about her legal options even beyond recording the money from her original contract. Rob, do you have a couple new videos based on some of the reactions people are having? Go ahead and play this one. Here's Joy Reid and Rachel Maddow. Our chairman of the of the NBC Universal News Group, Cesar Conde, uh, who we both know very well, um, he sent a memo that we all got as employees here, uh, rescinding the hiring of Ronna Romney McDaniel. And I know I felt very strongly about it. I know you felt very strongly about it. I think everyone from four o'clock on, from Nicole all the way to midnight, we all felt very strongly and said so on our <laughs> respective shows uh, yesterday. And I, I just have to say, when somebody does the right thing. I feel like it should be acknowledged as publicly as we acknowledged our outrage. And so I, I know how I feel about it. I am grateful to Caesar for actually making the right decision. I think it was the right decision, but I want to get your take as well. Oh, well, thank you for asking me about it. I, I still <laughs> feel oh. like, oh. I, still, I still feel like a little, it, it always feels wrong to talk about things, you know, in the company Agreed. as if it's news. And I, you know, it's just this, it's yeah, not the way either it you wrong. or I are, are <laughs> wired, I know, but I, I will just say that journalists are a fractious bunch. And in our big company with all sorts of different journalistic entities, you have all sorts of different people working in this business, doing all sorts of different kinds of work. And to see the essentially unanimous feeling among all the journalists in this building and all the senior staff and all the producers and everybody in this building about this was one thing. But then to see the executives and the leadership hear that and respond to it and be willing to change course oh, based on it, based on called a coup. their respect you for us. It's called a right coup, there. and you should be ashamed of yourself if you run that and company. And that's why you're an echo exactly. chamber. Exactly. Yeah. And that's also why your ratings suck. Yeah, and by the way, like, yeah. and listen, and Ronald McDaniel, I can care less. I mean, just going up, Vivek said, and we were there, I'm sick and tired of this Republican establishment that has made us the party of losers. All right, where's the accountability? Ronald McDaniel, since she was in, he goes, losing 2018, 2020, 2022, 2023. It almost seems like, to me, I'm always that guy looking you know, from a different angle, it's almost as if they wanted Alina. I know Adam. We talked about this last week. Like they were like mm-hmm. Alina. They put like, "Hey, Ronna, go in there and just lose your ass off. Make them lose, lose, lose. And when you're done, we'll give you a job. We'll give you a job at MSNBC. We'll give you six hundred thousand dollars. And guess what happened? The employee said, "Whoa, you guys didn't run that shit by us." Because at the end of the day, yeah. anything different than these two or Chuck Todd, I would love to see that. It would have been a change. Yeah, but they're threatened by that. Oh, so 1,000%. Yeah. I want to hear another person. At least give us a new face. Like, have you, be honest, have you ever sat and heard uh, Rachel Maddow for her whole segment? It's no excruciate. I try to. Five days a week. I'm, by the way, that's you know, a, it's called mental toughness. That's how you. <laughs> Because they, people take, people take if you can do it, yeah. you're gonna be mentally tough. Oh my god! Wait a minute. You know, like, and I heard this. Like, you know, the terrorists that we catch, and we want to find out if they have information. The hell with torturing them. Just tie them up. Play MSNBC. Rachel Maddow. They will spill all the. They'll be like, just don't Turn play it hard. Yeah, but Please. they like that stuff because that's how they got in. Oh And they yeah. got a check. Yeah. No shit. The, 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 the reality it's is, standard. Ronna McDaniel is now the poster child. For being politically homeless. Adam, yeah. first of Sorry. all, your yeah. voice is already bad, and you're distancing yourself from the mic. Like, get okay. closer yeah. to the We're mic guy. I'm trying to respect the mic. Yeah. Get close <laughs> to the mic. Ronald McDaniel is the poster child for being politically homeless at this point. 
She's got nowhere to go. She's not going to go to the left. She's not going to the right. Well, that's what it used Trump to be. Liz it. Cheney. It used to be Adam Kissinger. She's, she's, what is it? she's in nowhere. She's in nowhere. Exactly. Right now. And that's just that's, that's sort of symbolic of where we're at in politics. You're either far left in the Bernie camp or on the right with MAGA with Trump or you're done. Yeah. So what is she like? What do you what, like? Because she, obviously she wants to work. She want, what do you do? She now? does nothing. At this what point. do you do now? She becomes a lobbyist. Yeah, probably. That's it. Well, I mean, she just made 600 grand, bro. Yeah. For uh, how long was she on there? For half an hour? 20 minutes. 20 30 grand. minutes. Yeah. Well, if she got paid out. Well, look, if there's a well-worn path. The well-worn path is at the end of an administration or when you leave your job in government, and it doesn't matter whether you're working for Republicans or, or Democrats, there's a path that's a well-worn path mm-hmm. that goes to New York, and you either go to book publishers or you become a commentator. It's there. Jen Psaki's got her show. They all go there to continue to spout mm-hmm. you know, their, their, their drivel or to write a book that's got to tell all of some juicy encounters with and then we have to be sexual about some lobbyists did this we did this legislation yeah. was this and that's the game that's played and Caesar Conde is the guy that was running the nonprofit inside of a cable company called MSNBC and he was attempting to hire somebody to diversify and to get um, something that he doesn't have right now ratings and guess what it backfired because the inmates are running the asylum that's and now 100%. the employees are saying no 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 you don't get to hire that guy we're all upset about it and I think most of them I think the word that was used here was threatened I think they were threatened. They don't. They know the conservative views or anything that's on a conservative side tends to get ratings. So it is. It is a threat to them, despite but it's Ron both McDonough's sides, Tom. Flaws. But it's both sides, Tom. But it's both sides. Let me explain to you. The right is the same way as well. I okay? agree. It, 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 some of the podcasters. When we announced Cuomo was uh, joining the crew, right? Oh my God! You know, you, I can't believe it though. Mm-hmm. Biggest, huge, f- f- you know, the scroll- I'm unsubscribing, yeah, leaving. Whole, and, totally, and guess yeah. what happened? The next live w- was the biggest ever, and the next live, and the next live, and yeah. just us, how home team, yeah. like, mm. you know, this Tuesday was the biggest live uh, on YouTube worldwide, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. So sometimes when you make a decision, you make a decision knowing there's going to be some but that back, makes, backlash. That makes noise. Yeah. I mean, noise Guess is what? Good. You're a leader. Stand up for yourself. You, yeah. you, you're worried about people bitching about kids. So guess who's running the, what's that saying? The, the in my, inmates, inmates are running, are running the, the asylum. asylum. Right. I mean, that's NBC right 1, now. 1,000%. The NBC is being ran by the inmates, and you're afraid because you brought in Ronna McDaniels. By the way, it's the perfect person they brought in. She was ready to throw Trump under the bus like it's the ideal Republican you were bringing in. And I'm not saying she like was going to throw— view, the, view, the view girl that they brought in. Is, oh, it, but but the point being is yeah. it was a perfect person for I that. I think so. It's an establishment Republican that was coming in. Keep her. It's going to be very hard to find— you know, somebody like that that's coming in from being the RNC chair. But that's, I actually think this is a loss for NBC, and it's a bad look for the leaders at the top of NBC. I think so. And who's, who's the CEO of uh, MSNBC, Rashida Jones? Who is it? Who's the, who's the CEO? No, a, it's Cesar Conde is the guy who leads the whole thing. But who's the, C, I who's think, the CEO? I, I've heard that name. I think she may be the news division executive yeah, like, okay. vice president or something. So basically, so can you, that Tom, that's like, think about this. That's like. Patrick bringing Cuomo, me, you, and Adam going on our own podcast <laughs> and going, what the hell is no, wrong not on with your pa- own podcast, I would on love his for podcast. you guys to do it. I should have done one of those. Hi, guys. Late I would breaking. love it. What the F is Patrick doing? He got Cuomo? <laughs> what? I know Pat's head would just it would come into the scene. Like, Hi, Patrick. Like, and you nailed it. Like, what kind of what kind of CEO no, you are you? you no, no, no. And the shit. next day, and the next day you're at Starbucks talking to someone saying, Would you like non-fat milk? Yeah, yeah. And I'm yeah. like, no, I'm, I look like the guy that was on there. That's not me. I'm Why not is on Vinny the at Starbucks podcast. now? Yeah. Oh, well, his... guy, guy uh, pulls me aside. I'm in St. Augustine. He says, Are you, do people ever tell you you look like Patrick B. David? I, I get that all, all the time. time. Do you, do you, do you, <laughs> does anybody ever tell you you look, look like Trump in. Sawyer? I go, oh my God, I hear that <laughs> all the time. <laughs> By the way, half the time I'm in like a home goods and I don't want people yeah, to know. Yeah, of course. Like, yeah. You yeah. know what? I can't stand her. Did you see what she oh, yeah. did the other day? With, yeah. Yeah. yeah what a little. Kind of By the way, you want me to tell you what happened to me yesterday? I was in a store and somebody said to me, um, I heard the girls over in the corner saying you're on on the news a lot. What news station? And I said, if you're asking me that, you're I don't not. Want to know. That's so funny. <laughs> and she goes, right "What answer. news?" Yeah. I said, "Fox." And she goes, "Oh, 
You're right. And I was oh, like, bye now. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> yeah, bye. go watch the view. Go Although watch the fairness, view. In fairness, I go on CNN. I do. I do. No, you I do. go. I'm yeah. not afraid of the other. I yeah. like. I think that's by the way where we need to be heard. Would There's you no love? Question. Would you love to be on the view for an episode? Like if they were just like, hey, I mean, they would never. I have ever said do on national television, yeah. they've played clips of them talking about me, and I've said this on. I think I was on Hannity or somebody, and they played a clip, and I was like, "Where's my invite?" Yeah. I would love to see their audience. Yeah, I wish the camera so flipped once just to see the audience yeah. of The View. Oh, my God. Imagine what that bunch of Rachel Maddow's never invited me. No, of course not. And you want, what a great point. Kaylin Collins <clears throat> has. She has. Yeah. I've gone on with CNN. her. Yeah. And we had a really respectful conversation. And, you know, and then, of course, she invites, you know, an ex-Trumper to talk about me and be nasty. But. Yeah. I, I think that that's what's missing in our country. I think so, too. And, totally agree. I mean, and why no, can't you just talk? Yep. You know, stop talking about me. Talk to me. Yep. I, I'm clearly available. Yep. Sit there. Talk to me and talk about it. Let's talk about it. We don't have to be on the same yeah. side, but we don't have to bash. Yeah. yeah. Could you notice chambers it? are killing our country. Well, because if you notice this, talk I think to each other. Pat, you did a shout out for for somebody. You challenged somebody. When when have you ever seen a Rachel Maddow, Joy Reid, um, uh, Whoopi Goldberg, Joy Bihar, have they ever left their little room, their little audience, and come to talk to somebody different? How about get the hell out of there? Do it in a respectful way. Are you capable of mm -hmm. doing that? They can't that. do they it. Can't. They would never do it because guess what? They don't have an audience that's told when to applaud, told when to ooh, because they, they would have no argument. Because by the way, I watched a clip. Joy Bihar is talking to the guests, but she's reading a teleprompter or something on the side. It's not you. You're just a mouthpiece. And you nailed it. If we can't have that conversation, that dialogue, you're just there because Joy Reid got caught too. Remember that time where they cut to and she's like another effing war. Yeah. She doesn't. She doesn't even believe it. She's doing it for the money. Yeah. And you, what's you your price? What? They they figured it out, Vinny. They figured it out because if you go back 12 years ago, they used to invite Ann Coulter on, and Ann Coulter would kick people's asses. And so they sat back there. Okay, strong, educated woman who's highly professional. Maybe we don't want this girl on here kicking the oh, ass Dana of our Bat. host. Me on Dana I can Bat. no longer remain in today's Democratic Party. Tulsi Gabbard says she is no longer a Democrat. A potential Tulsi Gabbard VP. Where we are being told that we just have to comply and go along with whatever they say. American people uh, are smarter than this. However, we must remain vigilant to recognize their propaganda for what it is, pure lie. Unfortunately, we live in a time where free speech is under attack. Whatever they say goes, and we, we have to just follow. And the people who suffered under your reign as prosecutor, you owe them an apology. Taking on Kamala Harris on a debate stage before, I would look forward to doing that again. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.